when you are the author and you, and you say, oh, I have a good eye for color, or I have a good eye, keep in mind that you didn't write the book for yourself. You're writing the book so, for somebody else. So don't ask yourself if your cover is nice to you. The first thing to do to test a cover is to go and ask other people and ask the right question. You don't ask people, do you like the cover? Because this is not about liking the cover. Victoria, thank you so much for joining me today. I'm very excited to dive into all things book cover design. Before we get into the real specifics about book cover design, I'd love to go back because I know that you founded Beauty Book around 2013, I think, if my research is correct, with your sister. So I'd love for you to just share a little bit about what inspired you to establish an online business that was going to help authors with their book cover design. And I know you do formatting, you do all sorts of things. So what's the origin story behind the company? My sister is a graphic designer. She had had just her baby at the time, her baby Francisca. I had just quit. Uh, I'm an engineer. I had just quit my job and uh, I was looking to do a startup on my own on the internet. And uh, we saw this uh, amazing opportunity with the self publishing uh, industry. So we thought that uh, we gathered together. We complemented each other really well because I had the technical side and she is an, an artist, a really talented artist and designer. And with the situation of the baby Francisca, because she was living in Barcelona at the time, she, she moved afterwards with me with the little baby. And um, it was like a great because she, she was a mom and this allows us to work, to do really well and to take care of the baby at the same time uh, w without having to, to, to have any schedules or to have mm -hmm. to leave the baby in a... In a in, in, to, in school since very little she she was a mom she took care of her baby and we did great with this uh, amazing um, um, job that we have that is working with authors that we love that it's it's great yeah and I can imagine like you talked about the fact that self-publishing was really kicking off at, at that yeah. time over 10 years ago and it's been so interesting to see the whole self-publishing world develop. What have you noticed over the last 10 years, just as this, as this view from, from the book cover design perspective, what have you noticed about self-publishing? Well, that um, it, it made, um, it inspired and motivated a lot of uh, authors that, they, 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 they like to write as a, as a hobby or they like that in, in addition to their job that maybe it's very technical, they have like this, uh, uh, they can like have their own creativity, you know, mm. side, a hobby that they develop maybe with other authors in, 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 in studies and, gathering, you know, for, for, for to, to read each other's uh, readings. So it, it, it allowed them to, to, to get uh, to publish without having to go to the, uh, a publishing house. Mm. Yeah. yeah, for me, it just really feels like it's given everybody a voice. Like you exactly. say, the people who maybe started writing as a hobby because they had a full-time career, but they've been able to then build a bit of a brand with their books or the people, mm -hmm. like you say, who have that sort of scientific expertise. I think for me, that's what I love. It, it gives everybody a voice because I think even literary agents would agree that sometimes they might say no to a book that is a is a really fantastic book it just so happened that when it was on their slush pile they were feeling a bit tired that day and they sort of overlooked it so created a lot of diversity and niche mm. 
subjects where the authors are very in touch with their fans, with their communities, and he, he, they get much more feedback from the reader. Before, you publish a book, and uh, if uh, it wasn't by a journalist or an, ar an article about your book, you didn't get much feedback uh, of mm. your book. Now with social media, every author has the opportunity to interact with their own readers, and uh, and then so so now they they have appear much more subjects, much more uh, areas of interest that are more of niche. Yeah, and uh, the 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 authors had this valuable feedback, and these rich communities are increasingly making the the whole ecosystem grow. Yes, yes, I love that observation, especially around the niche, because I think, obviously, publishers, they have to follow some kind of guidelines, they have to have a sense of, well, what's working in the market, and possibly they are a little bit loathe to take the kinds of risks with, like you say, a very niche book. But if someone's already got an audience, they know that they've got people who are engaged in their topic, they can go straight away and self-publish that book and be completely engaged with their readers. It, uh, yeah. the, the, the big publishing houses, they have to be profitable. Yeah. They, because there is a lot of investment in each book. You are not just paying the author, you are paying like a, a lot. There is a whole value chain from the the author that writes the book to to the book into the bookstore, and mm. you need to pay the bookstore uh, seller, you need to pay the truck driver, you need to pay the printer, you need to pay the marketers, you need to pay publicity, you need to pay designers. There there are lots of people that work in each project, so that mm. project has to sell broadly in order to be able to recover the cost that it involves. But when self, with self-publishing, you can have a much uh, smaller audience, and but nevertheless, and much more interactive, and, 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 and you can be profitable as an author by self-publishing because mm. you can reach the same interest or the same area that you like to work on with with the, the people interested in, in actually participating on reading that. Yeah, yeah, I love that. Okay, well, let's dive into the book cover design, Victoria. I'd love to start with the purpose of a cover. I mean, obviously, there's the practical purpose. The book needs the cover to, to keep it to keep it neat, to keep it safe. And if we think about the covers of books that were set, you know, hundreds of years ago, they literally were just practical. They had the title but they were there and they were designed to just protect the pages in between the book, but it's changed a great deal. And I know that at Beauty Book, you work very hard not to have a signature style. Like it's not about your style, it's very much about the individual cover representing the author. So I'd love for you to talk about how you see the purpose of a book cover. To point that what you said that uh, many years ago they were very simple and now they have evolved. That's because the technical possibilities for design, you have many tools. Many, the technology has make you easier, you know, to 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 for illustration for uh, lots of broad things. But as you say, before it was a title, the author name, and you have very little resources in order to differentiate one or with the other. That yeah. was interesting. That's what happened. But uh, to regarding the purpose of the cover, I I, I like to to say like it's like the packaging of the mm. book. The book is a product, and when you go into the bookstore, it's like also going to the supermarket. When you go to the supermarket, there are areas where the 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 the, the, the the same kind of products, they are grouped, they are not randomly mm. thrown in the supermarket and neither in the bookstore. You have fiction or non-fiction, you have poetry, you have a, the, every genre is organized in a certain way in a bookstore. So the same with the supermarket. And if you think the cover as a packaging is because following the example of the supermarket, you, you can see the, the milk, for example, there, and you can tell just by looking at them which one is chocolate milk 
and which mm. one is D vitamin B. So the purpose of the of the of the cover is to to tell uh, the, the the reader what to expect. It's, mm. it's supposed to to say the genre of the book. Mm -hmm. Of course, communicating the title, the author, and, and other things. Uh, but it also gives you the tone of the book. Uh, it also gives you the time framing, the subject. Uh, mm. the, the the purpose would be that in a single look, the the you you get not only uh, attracted to the cover, mm. it has to attract your view because you are competing with other similar products like the milk or the wine. <laughs> You, you, there, there are several, for example, books in, in the same genre. You, you want to, to, to cut the reader's attention for one side, and for the other, to give them as much information and, and the, the most accurate possible regarding uh, what is the book about. This is interesting because you've got on one hand the fact that you want to attract them to buy the book and then on the other hand you've got to give them the correct information exactly it's very important because you know even if you are a great writer if you made a mistake communicating what the book is about or what genre is the book to the reader even if the book is excellent you uh, the, the 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 reader has been misled he expected somebody else of the book so you need to communicate very well everything that i told you the genre the tone the subject and what to expect of, of the book what's the book about yeah and it's making me think, Victoria, of almost like a conflict between that real desire to want to attract and to want to sell, but making sure, like, for example, I'm thinking of when someone puts like a clickbait image on a video. And, and sometimes when you then watch the video, you realize that the clickbait image had nothing to do with the video. You're sort of watching the video, waiting for the moment that the clickbait image tells you is going to happen, but it never happens. Of course, with a video, you, you can just stop watching it. But I'm curious, does that happen where you might come into some kind of conflict between giving the correct information and trying to attract the reader to, to, to buy the book? that is very contraproductive to mislead the reader because if the reader doesn't get what he was looking for he will write a bad review in Amazon and, and a self a self uh, author a self published author the way to grow the way to 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 to, to sell the most possible uh, amount of books to to spread his his work is to get people to write good reviews about you so even if you manage to sell a single book, if that person that read the book writes you a bad review, it wasn't worth it to sell it. You 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 lose all the sales you could have had selling the book to the right people, to the really interested people in reading your book. Yeah, that's lovely. It really makes it clear the that it's just not such a good path to go down to really almost like dupe the reader into buying it's, the book. It's, it's contraproductive. It's, yeah. it's much better to have like a small audience of niche readers where you can build an, a, a, an Instagram or a Facebook or on social media, an interactive community that, that can have the power of triggering and, 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 and viralize your work uh, uh, much more than, than doing something deceiving that ends up yeah. kicking with about uh, about the review it's yeah so you mentioned the cover wants to portray the tone of the book it wants to make the genre very clear mm -hmm. so what are some i suppose common signifiers for specific genres i mean you know immediately i've got an image of like a vampire in my head you know if yeah. there's a vampire on the cover but of course then that becomes a bit cliche doesn't it so how do you how do you use recognized signs to show the genre but without being cliche uh, there are several elements that 
you can have in the in the cover that you can use in different ways uh, in order to to present the book. For example, um, you can tell the difference between fiction and non-fiction because of the 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 typography you use. It's, mm. it's much a more serious typography. The the the, the, the colors you use, the, the may, sometimes the fiction is a much more simple or or, or fring, minimalist cover than another one for a for a thriller, for example. Mm. Usually, the the special effects uh, helps you to 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 tell that this is a fantasy book. It, it's. I find it hard to to explain the the without actually uh, showing actually actual covers. But yeah, I understand. If you next yeah. time you go to the bookstore and and and, and you make the, the exercise of without reading the, the 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 signs on top of the the library to to tell which section you are, you will see that you will be able just at, uh, be viewing the browsing the the covers. Yeah. You can see I what have the, say, the children the children section is. That for, you can tell the difference between a children book and a a, 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 a political thriller or or a poetry book. Yes, you, you will tell yeah. by, by looking. I definitely noticed that with thrillers, with crime fiction, or psychological suspense the covers are a lot more dark often the typography is like in a sort of neon colored font uh, or maybe a red or like a sort of luminous green and it's it's sort of the the letters kind of come out of the of the cover if that if there must be a technical term for that but where the the the, the title is like 3D, slightly 3d effect effect in the yeah, yeah th there are many, many uh, design um, uh, styles or, or elements that you can use to, to mm -hmm. uh, for example, in, in memoirs, you, you, you could also tell that uh, uh, they, they usually they are all, all pictures or uh, when, when, when someone is writing himself, so his autobiography, they use a family picture or they use a, a, a typography that uh, tells you that this is a, a book about you know life or, or I, 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 I have it's hard to explain in words it's much better to show you examples of mm. actual covers but yes but this is interesting because it's telling me that it's not enough. Like, let's say I was going to self-publish my book and I thought to myself, oh, I've got a good eye for colour and I've got a good eye for design. Mm -hmm. It's telling me that's not enough. I have to really understand what are the signs for a specific genre. Am I going to put a picture that's going to represent to my reader that something that this is not what the book is about? And it's making me think, Victoria, of what makes a good cover and what makes a bad cover. Because I know sometimes I buy a book and I'm like, oh my God, this cover is just gorgeous. But of course, we've got, it's it could look terrific, but if it's given me the impression that the book is going to be something other than it is, then that would say it's a bad cover. Or if it's, um, if it's, not telling me what to expect, but are there other things, if you were to look at a cover, what other reasons might you think, oh, that's not a good cover? What you said at the very beginning is key. When 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 you are the author and you, and you say, oh, I have a good eye for color, or I have a good eye, keep in mind that you didn't write the book for yourself. You're writing the book so, for somebody else. So don't ask yourself if your cover is nice to you. The first, things, uh, the first thing to do to test a cover is to go and ask other people and ask the right question. You don't ask people, do you like the cover? <laughs> because this is not about liking the cover. To see if a, 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 a cover has, is effective, 
you you show the cover to people that doesn't know about your project don't show it to your husband or to your mom because they, they you have been talking to them about what you wrote they already know your book or your project go to the janitor or to somebody else you know or or a potential reader that they do, they don't know anything and say what do you think what is this book about and and they have just by looking at the title, at the image, at the, at the style, or everything, find out what they say, and if it's close to, if it's it's it it's what you really meant to convey, to communicate, then the code is good. <laughs> mm. But this is not about also you like it or not, because sometimes you you can't say that a, a cover is good. But maybe it's very striking, it's very catch eyeing mm. and it triggers thought. So even if it's not uh, aesthetically something you really like, it's very effective and that's what you're looking for. I love this idea that what makes it effective is not the same as what makes it nice to look at. Is yeah. it is it is it triggering a thought that's related to the book or is it telling you what the book is about that's such a great question not do you like the cover but yeah. what do you think this book and is also about it's very important when the cover is well done it has to work by itself because <laughs> it has happened many times to me that an author comes with this idea and, and and then they show it to me and I look at it and they start pointing with a finger and say, well, this is a dove because it's peace. The dove is eating a snake because it, it shows the, the desperation that the world has for peace. I don't know. They, they, they put together a symbolism or a metaphor that if they don't explain, nobody gets it. <laughs> so that doesn't, that's not good too. You can think of a metaphor, you can think of a concept, but once you put it together on the paper, go and ask somebody else to see if they, they are cutting the idea that you wanted to communicate. If you need to explain it to, to, to mm. people, it, it's not well done. It's, it's not yeah. what it was supposed to be. <laughs> that really makes sense, yeah. And also I'm thinking of how the title and the image interact yeah. because again and I'd love to hear your thoughts on this if you have an image which is exactly the same as the title mm -hmm. you it sounds like you're almost missing an opportunity exactly. because you could have the title that's that's in some kind of relationship with the image so what what are your thoughts about how the image and the title work together well, you have to think that you have like a the, the cover is a very small you know uh, space that sometimes you need to put a, a lot a lot of information maybe the, the title is very long sometimes you want to include a quote by a, by a very famous author that is very important so it's a, another piece of information so you are very restricted in space and you have to take the most of the, the resources you have in order to be able to be the most effective uh, uh, possi possible. Mm. That's why, uh, yes, the the image and the title, they, they try to uh, complement in each other and not give you the same the same message. Like if, he, if he, the title is the necklace, don't, don't, don't put a woman with a necklace on the picture because you are already saying <laughs> This is about a necklace or <laughs> you try to, to look another for another background or another resource in order to give a little more information about uh, what kind of a novel or what kind of a, of a, a book are you writing. Is it, is it funny that it has humor? It, ha it has a, like a suspense? Is it a, a love story? Just the yeah. necklace, the title, can, can't you tell you all those variants that the story can have? You have another element to, to add more information about what we have been talking about, what's the book about and what's the genre. Yes, I love that because you said, you know, is the book funny, is it suspense? So you're really looking, as you said earlier, to get that tone across. Mm -hmm. And so obviously the image 
whether it's more of like a cartoon image, whether it's like a beautiful illustration, yeah. whether it's a photograph. The typography tells you, you there are cartoonish typographies that are uh, you use them when when it's a book about humor. That when it's a humorous book, mm. if you're going to write a memoir, it would be it wouldn't be the right uh, you know um, element to use unless your life was comic or you wanted to to. Mm. Co communicate that uh, the, the, your life was funny and and, and that's why the, you you want to 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 write a, a, about it mm. so i'm curious victoria because i know so it's i know that you're more in charge of the marketing and the it you're kind of bringing your knowledge of systems from engineering into the business and maria's background as a graphic designer as you said she's a fantastic artist so I'm curious because as we're talking, I'm thinking there's a difference between being able to put together a beautiful design, but having the knowledge of the industry and how to, as you said, attract the reader, how to give them the right sense of what the book is about. So what, you know, from a sort of outside observer, how did you, how did you see Maria's learning curve? Did she already have a lot of knowledge or did she have to sort of like quickly learn how to be a fantastic book cover designer? Well, that's very funny because <laughs> one day I have this Zoom with a, with a, an author and um, usually that's also important uh, the, the best way to interact with a designer is by in written by exchanging emails uh, because uh, i always say that the beauty of working with authors is that they have great communication skills so they they, they are very uh, skilled in explaining in written what they need what the project is about and what uh, and, and and to ask questions and the the communication is great and the advantage of, of having it in written is that we are working in several projects at the same time. So, so, so if I talk on, over the phone with someone, I have to take notes and then I have to come back to those notes. And it's not the same that if everything gets, you know, on file. And when I mm -hmm. get to work on that uh, project, I, I write, I see what we have been exchanging and I remind me the details that were, were up to. But with this author that I was talking to, she insisted that she wanted to have a Zoom. So I, I show up <laughs> and said, who are you? And I say, okay, I'm Victoria. No, no, but I, I needed to talk to Maria. Oh, no, but I, I will help you with whatever. I will answer all your questions. Why? She would tell me like, and I, I feel like, like saying, well, I have to pretend to be useful because she's giving, up, uh, giving me half of the revenue. So lady, <laughs> make it. <laughs> so we had like a very tense, uh, because she was reluctant to, to, to talk to me, despite that I am the one in charge to, 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 to talk to the clients. I am the one to, who reads all the emails. And then the, mm. it's a, a very creative job because we, we, we do, like a brainstorming between the two for each pro project. Like we, we, we start by asking the author many questions going and forward. And when we have all the information, we start thinking about what concept to use because it's not a picture. It's not, it's the concept. What, how, how we can, what, what we will, we, which scene are we going to create? Which resources are we going to use? And what do, do we want to communicate? And that's what we do together. But she is the one that makes it visually, that that has mm. the, the 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 artistic, the the and the because another thing is important is to think that it's different to 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 think like in abstract. You can you can think like imagine someone you know taking a bicycle and and and, and going to the moon. You can think about it. But when you want to make it happen, it doesn't work. So. With visualization, it has been the same thing. I was once tr working with an author that she wanted like a picture in India in the night with uh, some uh, festival they have with lightings, with balloons in the night. You can think about it, but when you go to visualize, it's impossible the lighting to make it, you know, uh, mm. you can't produce a, visual a visualization of that concept. 
So Maria is the one who, yeah. who, who can take a concept and make it visual. Make mm. it. But I'm also getting the sense that that brainstorming is really important and also the questionnaire that you go through with the client because let's say they've written a novel and for them, they might feel that the theme of the novel is um, love conquers all. They might feel that, but talking to them, you might have a sense of another theme that they're not aware of that could be a stronger message to the reader. Does Does that ever happen where in all of the questions, you start to notice something else coming through. All the time, what we usually do is that we listen to the ideas mm. and what we think and we exchange. And uh, once we listen and when we analyze, if the, maybe the, the author has a good idea, has already a concept that is worthy to, the, to be developed, to be put into consideration, we might put together that and come up with another one by your own so he has two things to, to sing or we can tell him no this is not going to work your idea doesn't work and explain to them why we exchange ideas and we discuss and at the, at the very end we, we end up doing what the author wants because that's the beauty of self-publishing you are the boss this is your book and you're in control and that's okay but mm. we always give them our professional advice and then they can decide whatever they want. My advice also is to, 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 to think what kind of author do you want to be? Do you really want the book to sell or you are writing for yourself because you like it, you enjoy it, to have fun? Mm. If, if that is the case, that's totally okay that you participate in the cover and you choose uh, even uh, 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 not following this, the design advice and say, no, this is what I want. And we will put that together as uh, the, the best as we can following. But if you really want to be professional and the book to have uh, the, the, the most, uh, the best chance to, to be sold, listen, to, try to, to, to have a, try, try to trust the designers. Yeah. I have a couple of examples of, uh, for example, one day I was in a conference by the, the Irish uh, author, um, John, what's his name? Uh, John Banville. Banville? Banville, yeah. Banville. Yeah. Uh, he was giving a conference and when the, the questions uh, started, I, I, I asked him, uh, how how if he participated in the in the cover of the design of their books if he was uh, part of that uh, process <laughs> and he was waving starting to wave his hand like this like saying oh I couldn't care less but in the middle he realized that he was insulting all the designers that work for his books so. At that very instant where he was waving his hand, he says, oh, uh, I have a very good team of designers. They take care I, and I love their work. I love what they do. So uh, you can tell that professional writers, they have nothing to do with the design of their cover. Yeah. Of course, they show them the cover to, to see if they have something to say, but they, they really delegate that. To, to the design team, they don't participate, they, they write the book. And it happened to me also with Richard Ford, I, I, the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> I made the line in New York because he was uh, uh, participating in, in, a, in, a, in a conference and I bought the, the last book that was uh, Let Me Be Frank With You by Richard Ford. Yeah. I made all the line and I gave him my card and I said, hey, Richard, I would love to design your, your next book cover. <laughs> And he was very kind, and we. But you, he told me that uh, he didn't. He didn't work on the design. He has yeah. uh, like like design. So I mean, it makes sense, if, if Victoria. This, if this very, if this very uh, professional writer, they have nothing to do, and they um, 
uh, trust the designers. If uh, you should follow also their, their their example in the sense that you have to to say, okay, I'm good in writing. I am the writer, but I should, uh, if I want to sell the book, uh, let's hear at least, or uh, let's follow mm. somehow. That, that that to accomplish something, there are many ways to do it, and many and several are, are good. So you get to choose something, but sometimes we get to a point where they just reject all the possibilities and they want a specific thing that we think that it is not the best. We end up doing it, but uh, it, that's, yeah. that's what you have to consider. Do I want to sell the book or is it for fun for myself? Yeah. I mean, it it's, it's so makes sense to me because as you said, the writer of the book, their zone of genius is putting the words on the page. And I can't tell you from many writers that I've spoken to, often we're so close to the project that we can't necessarily see exactly the tone or exactly what is going to appeal to a reader because like you said we know what appeals to us but we're the writer we're not the reader so it really makes sense that it's so important to have that person who's got a completely different perspective you and maria are coming to this with all of your experience in terms of what's going to sell the book, what's going to signal to the reader, the genre, mm. the tone, mm. that whether it's suspense, what's going to attract the reader. I'm also curious in terms of the, the 10 or so years that you have been working with writers and designing covers. Obviously, your design fits what the book is, but are there approaches that, for example, you used to do, but you realize, oh, that, you know, they're out of date or, you know, you mentioned earlier because of the books that were published hundreds of years ago, they could only just put the title on because that was all that was available. So in terms of what's available now in terms of design versus what was available 10 years ago, how has your design process changed? It's the same. It's always, you know, about uh, getting as much, gathering as much information as possible for a book, having as much interaction as possible with the author, and uh, thinking, you know, critically, uh, trying to, 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 to address all aspects of marketing, of uh, the, the, the target, uh, targeting the right readers, of um, cap capturing, you know, uh, a very relevant aspect of the book to 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 feature on the cover, uh, to and to choose the right uh, elements to 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 position the book in 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 and and, and, and tell the, the the writer as efficiently and and as possible about uh, what the, the the book is it's it's mm -hmm. the same what we have n a, a few a few months ago not even a year i think it has been really uh, revolutionary is the uh, artificial intelligence the the images uh, created through artificial intelligence artificial intelligence has like being a bomb like in every aspect of a uh, human professions everything uh, programmers i have i have been programming i'm not a programmer <laughs> but i got a piece of code asking you know uh, chat gpt to fix uh, uh, to add uh, like a feature i wanted to put in, in the website and without uh, really knowing with with very little knowledge of programming I was able to write a piece of code to put a functionality in my website. So it affects everybody. And regarding design, it's amazing the quality of the pictures at a very low cost. Because how how it worked before, you you we had you know um, uh, we were subscribed to services of uh, bank ima image banks. Mm. So we searched for, for, for images, sometimes uh, looking for a specific uh, 
thing or something just browsing to see if we uh, we can get inspiration in in the images mm -hmm. we saw but then you take the picture is it's expensive to 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 and it it uh, it wasn't exclusive I mm -hmm. mean if you wanted your your cover to be exclusive you have to pay like five thousand dollars a cover because you need a photographer to do a shooting to to you need it's much more expensive to say okay this image is uh, but even if the image wasn't exclusive the sign makes his uh, the, the the difference mm -hmm. you can have the same image used in several covers but if you use it uh, like additioning or blending it with other concepts or other images you can get the the very best of the image mm -hmm. but uh, you 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 would customize it so it wouldn't be the the original image anymore yeah with artificial intelligence you you have the the possibility to create the picture yeah you to create a scene I want a woman in the sea, the woman, I want the woman to be uh, brunette and to, to be wearing a, a, a pink skirt, you, you, you detail, so, so, so the accuracy of the scene that you get for a particular book is infinite. It's uh, much less time consuming than before because as you are building your own image, you don't have to browse, it takes time to browse, you know, the yeah. bank images to look for, for them. And what it also has done, not only for pictures, high quality pictures, you can tell the, whether the, the picture was taken by, the, by a photograph, photographer or whether it has made up by the artificial. You can tell, I don't know if you have seen examples of images created by the artificial intelligence, mm -hmm. but they, they are like amazing. And not only yeah. with, with pictures, but also with illustration. Mm. I remember like uh, several years ago, I was working with a client that uh, he was writing his memoirs and he requested, he wanted a scene of a little boy waiting for the train in a station and the train was supposed to be doing the curve. He, he de depicted a very uh, specific scene. So we started to work uh, with him and he didn't like any of the... the the draft we we presented, and so he, so he decided to not to 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 continue with the project. And I told him that's totally okay, but I advise you look for an illustrator because the the picture you are uh, trying to 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 get is so specific that you need mm. to be to make it tailor made. So uh, don't mm. look for a uh, book designer. You should look first for an illustrator and maybe if the illustrator is also a designer, you can design the cover. Otherwise, bring that illustration to us and we, we can keep, uh, keep, keep working on it. So when artificial intelligence, uh, I was testing it, I remember that case and I wrote a prompt copying the, the author's, uh, <laughs> copy and paste what the author mm. wrote to me. I mm. want a little boy. Uh, and I put the style, well, I want a, 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 a pencil writing, of the, a pencil uh, illustration. I, mm -hmm. I put the style, I, 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 I can't explain to you. <laughs> I wouldn't have lost that client if I had that tool before. Yes, it was right. It unbelievable, the mm. quality and the, the accuracy of the image yeah. I got. So we have yeah. many more elements, even for series, because sometimes the, the, the what's difficult to, to, to bring a series together is that the characters are always the same, but you can put the same picture of the same guy all the time. You need <laughs> the same yeah. guy doing different things, uh, and that's, yeah. different to, that's difficult to, to get. With the artificial intelligence, now you can create the characters for a series, yes. and you can use it uh, asking for that character to be dre dressed in a different way and to be standing in a different environment. Amazing. So it's very revolutionary, and we are very excited despite that we... Uh, I think people are afraid of uh, artificial intelligence yeah. because they think, oh, the programmer said I'm going to be out of job, the designers will say, oh, now authors are going to start to do their, their own covers. Everybody, uh, uh, writers, it, it also writes, you know, artificial intelligence is being used also to produce uh, content. 
the videos, yeah. text, whatever. So authors are also scared that somebody yeah. will start uh, writing a novel with the artificial intelligence. But I'm very positive, uh, optimistic, and I think that uh, it's good for everyone. That it will improve the yes. quality for everyone. That an author will never get uh, out of writing because uh, something written by artificial intelligence, and that uh, maybe we will start doing things for hobby or for. But it 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 will enrich humanity. Mm. It will create more work. It will be like it happened with the music. Remember. Mm -hmm. When the MP3, we we were used to. Well, I don't know how old are you, but we were used to buy CDs. Yeah, yeah. With Tape, anything. cassettes. Oh, oh my, me too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so there was one point where uh, the digital music, Amazon came up with this uh, thing that uh, you could buy a, a song. And 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 uh, oh, first, the the music industry was struggling because people were getting for free the the MP3 files from mm. the internet and putting together the, the 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 CDs they wanted or listening from their phones and and th th that was like a a a, a time of uh, you know uncertainty for the music industry, but mm. it worked much better for 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 musicians because before. They were robbed by the by the the, the, the record companies because you can never yeah. tell how many songs did you sell. They would pay the royalties, but in a very mm. it wasn't really trans direct to see how much did they sell and how much they are yeah. paying me. When up when Apple came with this model of okay, I will sell you for one dollar this song. Authors got much more money because they, mm. they, they, it, it was very mathematically direct yeah. to, to see how many songs you sold and how much went for the authors. Authors started to make um, better money than before. Yeah. So technology improved that. Yeah. It's interesting, Victoria. And I think going back to the, the pencil drawing of the boy on the station platform with the train, it makes me think that there's still a very important place for a book cover designer because it still comes back to the author thinking, oh, this is the right image, but the book cover designer having all of that marketing background and experience. Mm -hmm. So it might be that you can find your image on AI, but what typography are you going to use? What colours are you going to use? How are you going to lay everything out on the on the book jacket? And I'm curious, let's say there's a writer and they're thinking, yes, I do understand the importance of actually getting someone to design my cover for me. What are the things that they need to consider when when choosing a cover designer? Obviously, we've got to be aware of the budget. We've got to be aware of perhaps the genres that they specialize in. But if if someone were watching this and thinking, how, where do I begin? How do I find the right cover designer for me? What would you say? You said at the very beginning is key, is that you are aware that a designer is adding value in many aspects. It's not just the visual thing, it's all, a lot of concepts that you might, as an author, not be aware of that the designer is bringing. So, <laughs> that being said, don't, there are people that come to me and, and, and say, oh, I have the, the image. It's just it's, They want a discount because they, they, they are giving me the image and they just, uh, just put the title. If you think that design is about putting a title and an author name on an image, do it yourself. If you go yeah. to the designer, if because you understand that there is value and it's worth the investment. Otherwise, don't come. Don't ask for a discount because you are uh, giving me already an element or an image or, or whatever. Because I <laughs> with one client, I, I use an example about music. I use a lot of music examples. <laughs> and I told you. It's like if you were going to pay one thousand dollars to to listen to to Maria Carey, uh, you know, singing uh, Alleluia, and I told you, no, 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 pay me ten dollars and I will sing it to you. Like it, it's the same song. I, it's exactly the same. Just just instead of uh, paying her one thousand, I, I will sing it to you and pay, pay me one hundred. <laughs> yeah. So, no, it doesn't work. So 
the first step yeah, is... Yeah, I see what you're saying. Do you, do you really think that a design has value? So come and don't, don't start asking for a discount. That means... Mm. <laughs> Uh, well, it's important for a designer um, to uh, to to see the website, to see, to 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 see if uh, you know people that has already worked with them, to mm. to see if it, the website is well written, if the services are well explained, if the design in the mm -hmm. website is alluring, and what you say about the portfolio is very important because some designers are very niche oriented. And maybe you have a different genre, and that's not their speciality. So you should you should see the the, the diversity or the variety in the portfolio to see if you 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 feel like uh, you see the quality and the and the and the style could 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 could, be, could, could work for you. And once you you see all mm. that, the first thing I I, don't, I you should even if you you were recommended by. Don't 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 go to the to the order form straightforward and and pay the down payment and say okay I follow and I pay the down payment. I I I would first write an email to the designer because when you write an email and say oh my name is blah 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 this is my project I wanted to see you will see how fast do they answer to you. Hmm. You will see uh, the, the, how the communication skills, the actual communication skills of the designer, the, the way they, they reply to you, the way they are interested in your project, to mm. see if the, the first exchange, you know, is fast enough, is quality enough. If uh, you, you get a first sight without having to commit to a down payment yeah. first. And whatever you do, <laughs> please don't follow for the for the diamond package, ah. the premium package. No, in the sense, uh, I have noticed it happened to me once that there are people that they are targeting authors that they say, oh, I want to get the very best for my book. I want, uh, I, I want to spare no money whatsoever. I want the best for my book. And they fall for, 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 for people where the, the only thing they think that they are the, the very best because of the price tag. Mm. They're extremely expensive. And they think that because they are the most expensive of everything, they are the very best. Mm. And it happened to me once with a client that uh, he, he was a friend of another client of me that he asked me for a cover and I did the cover. And then he was explaining to me that he had already hired a company to publish the book with all the package, all the design included, and they were supposed to, but the, the cover they did wasn't very convincing and he wanted to provide them with this, his own cover, which I did. So we did the cover, we delivered the cover, the cover went there. A few days uh, after, he came back to me and said, hey, you know, I, I want to, to give it a try to publish in Amazon. So I, I have requested them to give me the files. But Amazon is asking me to for an empty place for the barcode, and I have already the, the ESVN barcode that they had already. Could you take it out for me? And I say yes, of course. So he gives me the paperback cover, and when I saw, they had used the cover I gave them, and they have stretched it to make it fit in the front cover of the of the book because I what I give my client was what he requested the ebook cover the front cover which was low resolution because when you publish you know an ebook is for screen it's not the same the yeah. resolution you need for print than the resolution you need for uh, for uh, for 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 a, a reading device printing looks very bad if it's less than 300 uh, dpi Mm. But when I saw that they have stretched the cover, I I, I started to research and I said, w and I I, f I found the website and they had charged him five thousand dollars for the whole process, and they they didn't even were kind enough as to say, hey, tell the designer to send us the original Photoshop file so we can fit the mm. cover into the paperwork. They didn't mm. even request that. So he ended up publishing everything by himself. And I was amazed at the, the lack even of kindness, because if they, he had yeah. paid that, that kind of money, why don't you try to, to do it your best? In, mm. 
So my, my first advice is not because they have an impressive price tag, they are really mm. the very best, and, or you should try, uh, you should uh, uh, trust them. Try to, to go with uh, your fellow yeah. authors, try to do some research on your own first, and try to it write does that seem that It seems that a recommendation is really important mm. for this kind of service, because yeah. as you say, you're just not going to know if then down the line something like that lack of quality or lack of care is going to yeah. take place. And, and as I told you earlier, the prices have become like a, a commodity because they are worldwide. Yeah. We are competing with people from East Europe, from Asia, from, from, from everywhere in the world. So prices are pretty much uh, the, the same. Don't, don't look for the most expensive. Look f for, for someone that w you really like the website, you really like the, the portfolio and, and you have mm. like a, a good, because this is, you should enjoy the process because. Uh, yes, thank author, you for mentioning that. Yeah. It's like your baby. One, one of my authors at the very beginning told me, oh, is, you know, <laughs> I, I'm so excited to be self-publishing for the first time. He was, he had already published books with, uh, um, in publishing houses. But he was testing uh, many years ago this new wave of self-publishing. Eventually, he came back to the publishing houses because he realized he didn't have the marketing power. He didn't have uh, all the, mm. the 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 things that his previous publisher uh, gave him. But when he started, he was very excited, and he said oh, that the problem with working with publishing houses is that they even decide the title of the book, and mm. he he was saying. Go figure, it's like somebody named your baby. <laughs> <laughs> That's, yeah. So he considered his books his baby. So yeah, you should look for uh, for someone that you feel uh, like uh, understood and listened and you enjoy listening to the ideas and the, the flow of communication is, 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 is great because participating in the creative process is great. Uh, I, I mm. totally... Um, invite authors uh, to, to, to give ideas, to give feedback. I love this advice, Victoria. It's actually making me think of a recent decision I had to make where I was looking for an editor. I've, I've recently finished a novel myself and oh. I wanted an, an editor to, to give it a developmental edit. And there's a fantastic website resource with hundreds of editors, all with great reviews, all with terrific CVs. And of course, you can search for the specific genre, but you're still facing 60 or 70 profiles. And it was exactly that for me, sending them a message and just telling them a little bit about the book. And I had seven different replies. And one of them stood out from all of the others because she was so enthusiastic. She pointed things about the project that had really captured her imagination. Whereas some of the other replies, everybody was incredibly professional, mm -hmm. but some were just very short saying, thanks for your, thanks for your brief. This is certainly something I can help with. And I thought to myself, that doesn't tell me anything about you. Whereas this woman really stood out because she said, this element's great. It's making me think of this. I'd be so excited to work on it. I've worked on something similar. So it's, it seems the same with, with the book cover design. If someone were to send you, you an email and to say, this is, this is the pitch, you would probably say, yes, we've done something similar here. This, this is kind of making me think of this. So I love that idea of just having a bit of an email exchange to, to test so the dynamic. Usually uh, uh, they ask uh, uh, questions about the, the publishing process. And we answer those questions in the first exchange of emails without their being committed for the sign or anything. You try, you know, to be useful at the very beginning mm -hmm. and, to, and to, to, to prove that you are knowledgeable, that you can, you, you have a, you know, value to add, help to, to give them in order. So, so as an author, I, when I choose, when, I, if I had to choose a, a graphic designer, I, I would look for that to see how helpful mm. they are. How, how willing they are to, to uh, how fast do they reply to emails? Is it an auto automatic reply, like, uh, like you say or not? Mm. I have nothing against automatic replies if they are 
if they are answering what I ask, because that proves that they are efficient. Yes, yes. yes. So <laughs> I feel insulted yeah. when I, I am asking A and they are replying with an automatic mail B. That, that means yes. that they, they, they didn't read my email. But if they, yeah. they are actually replying exactly, that I love them. I said, these people are efficient. It's an automatic mm. reply with the information I was looking for. And then you will see that uh, once you start exchanging, they, they will stop being automatic and they will get you know into the actual uh, question because most of the time, all authors have the same you know request at the beginning, the same questions. So yes, yeah, what, that makes sense. What I would look yeah. for someone efficient and for someone uh, willing to help and, 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 and excited and, and, and that he understands that this is your baby. Mm. And that you yeah. are, you treasure your project and, 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 and treat your project with the same, you know, dedication or the same, you know, eagerness to, to make it, uh, you know, to, to get it published as, as you have. Thank you so much, You're really Victoria. Welcome, I've really enjoyed chatting. Looking forward to talking to you some other time too.